for those that that don't know who is the ism um if, if someone just was just to stumble across you online somewhere what how would you s summarize who you are and, and, and what it is that you do? I used to think that the ism was uh, an alter ego or, or something, or, you know, he was this, this other person, but I, I am him and he is me. Like, it's not two separate people. I'm, I'm not playing a character. And... I think that the ism represents that authenticity. I think that's kind of. Are you serious right now? Really? Yeah, you are now rocking with the best. Yep. J. Reed. Uh huh. K. T. Yeah. T. Money. Uh huh. Yo, let's go, man. Check it, check it. Let's look. Mr. Fantastic, uh. equipped with a sick flow, sonic blasted. Uh. The new black Megatron flowing on. Spit like a flame, though I can't get past it. Woo. I'm right like uh. Vegas, you can't contrast it. I should have been made of diamonds. The ice off, sex me, sex me, I'll break your hymen. Shook with a 16, no defining. Uh. Uh. I am the end of time, the uh. beginning of the new words. Initial rhyme, the pre thought uh. before the thought could cross your mind. My aftermath hits before the crime, and I'll end the curse once you. Do the time, be kind, rewind it. Wow. Use your final words and sign it. Take the eyes and blind it. Uh, hey, no Ray. nickels, I dime it. Because I'm just that ill, no mess can hey, heal me. Wow. I'm just that contagious, you can't come near me. Created in my image, you're made to fear me. Uh, infest okay. your intellect with criminal syllables you never forget. Upset your process, trick receptors Activate the bullshit detectors uh. Why? Because you're all machines One trick robots in saggy jeans Sick <laughs> to get rich by any means Don't like crack city silver screen Put me in your vein, make you feel serene You'll be back to your curves like you 17 Woo! You can bounce on that baby like a trampoline And swallow all of this is your lean cuisine huh? uh, Okay, okay I wanted to know that I could put together a body of work. And that was where it started. Whether, you know, it was, you know, 10 songs, 12 songs, I just wanted to know that I could put an album out. And the more I kept making beats and the more I kept writing, I started taking it a lot more seriously. And then it was like, you know what? This is going to be my first album. Like, I really want this to mean something. And I don't want it to just be... Um, me throwing shit in a pot and calling it gravy. So I, I put a lot more thought into the songs and to the lyrics and what I wanted to say, you know, I, there's a song called Hollywood Jesus, which is pretty much about like the Illuminati and all of that stuff that was going on and, and going around at the time. And uh, chasing you about, you know, um, Chasing after people that you know aren't into you like that and just being stupid. Just kind of trying to pull from 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 my life and where I was at the time, and I, I used to get called um, monkey in middle school. So while while I was coming up for like, coming up with the concept for the album cover, I'm like, hmm, I'm gonna Google uh, monkey with a crown on, and I found it, and it was like, you know what, like if. If I could be king for a day, like, I think I'd be satisfied. Like, I don't need to be 
the running emperor of fucking hip hop. Like it, 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 it wasn't that deep to me. I was gonna want and done it. I was, I was, I was gonna put all my, my first album, and after that, that was just gonna be it. And you know, ten years later, obviously that's not the case. King for a day was one of those projects that it, 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 it just kind of, kind of encompassed this kind of sense of urgency and this, this, this aggression that I wasn't familiar with. I had gone through a lot. I had lost my job and I was really feeling like my entire life was falling apart. My relationships with people were falling apart every day. And I just, I needed an escape. And because if I didn't have one, I wouldn't be here right now. And I just would wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning and, and you know, finish my can of Steel Reserve 211, the black can. So you know, you know I was all types of rocker. And just drink and make a beat and cry and write. I kind of wanted to make sure that I worked with people that were going to support what I was doing, that understood what I was doing and where I was going. And at the time, um, Dave Jackson was managing me. Um, we met at a show at Red Light. Um, after my set, I went outside to have a smoke and he came up to me and we chit chatted. And next thing I know, I'm showing him songs that would eventually become King for a Day. When I think about uh, King for a Day, um, it was really just a magical ride. I mean, um, you had a bunch of people who didn't have a lot of money, a lot of resources. It all came together and um, and we decided to do something magical. Uh, we, um, we met Ism in uh, 2011 and like we instantly just clicked and began just Everything that we did was about music, um, and that led into the King for a Day project, which um, at the time I didn't know, you know, how it was going to turn out. Um, I just really was looking at, you know, the passion and um, and the determination that Ism have to release that project. So um, I did everything that I could to to try to make that happen. Um, the first thing um, that really helped it to come together was um where we were recording at i mean is um trace studios is um was the was the magic piece uh that we needed to to really make the project um what we, what we thought it was gonna be and when we got in there with uh with travis daniels the engineer and then um and owner of the studio um you know, we just went in there and made magic and he is like yo i got this studio Travis Daniels, he's fire, blah, blah, blah. You got to come through. And then I started working with Trav and that just changed everything. Like, not only does this man have just the fucking coolest personality, like he was able to know what I needed with, with without me having the right, beautiful, proper words for it. I, I could just go, oh, well, can you do the, the uh, uh, and, and he would figure it out. It was, it was crazy. Cause I am not the fantasy you want in life So I pick up my heart and I move on with life But all I do is contemplate If I were more sexier, would you have stayed? Did I die in inevitable? Mm, losing that ism with that second half Yeah You gotta stay, you gotta stay, stay in it I'm prone to make mistakes. Never said I would be perfect. We're both around. Alright. I'm wasting time. So You're good, you're good. Let's do it. I'm prone to make mistakes. Never said I would be perfect. I didn't say it was easy, but I said it would be worth it. We're both very deserving, but we don't see the reason. We're blinded by our lust and the late night creeping. No phone calls in the evening. Got too many in line for your pleasing. Right. Uh, it kindly don't appease me. We both know what is over your leaving. 
And I ain't left in filthy sheets No hellos in public, we must be discreet Cause I'm not the fantasy you want in life So I pick up my shit and I move on with life So recording King for a Day at Stray Studios um, in, in Georgia really, really made me excited about recording because I didn't like recording. Funny, right? Like the fucking guy with fucking 10 albums hates recording, right? Crazy. But at that particular point, I really didn't. I didn't like how my voice sounded. I thought I was being inauthentic because I wasn't like walking in my truth and I wasn't standing up and standing for my community. And I, and I felt like I was just being a fraud. But recording at Trace just, just made me feel like a fucking, like a fucking bad bitch. Like you walk in and it's the fucking platinum plaques this year on the fucking wall. Like it just made me feel, I finally felt like an artist. Like working with Trav made me feel like an artist. Working with Dave and troubleshooting songs with Dave and troubleshooting in the studio with Dave made me feel like an artist. Like if if anything, King for a Day kind of turned me into the artist that I wanted to be, that I didn't know that I could be, or that that thing that I had access to within me. Um, Dave and Travis were able to bring that out of me. Um, at the end of all of this, now what do you do after you have a record? You have to get it mi mixed and mastered, right? All right, so who am I gonna do? Perfect, Vespertine. Hmm. Hello, my name is Vespertine and I am the master engineer for the Isms King for a Day album. I met Anthony back in 2011 and um, he posted this music video called The Great In Me, I believe. I think that's the, the name. But um, I was so infatuated with the storyline and the song to where I reached out to him and I was like, yo, I really did this this joint here. Vespertine and I became like brothers, like what, 2011, 2012, do like some fucking MySpace shit or something, I forget. And I put on my first mixtape and I sent it to him. And he was like, you didn't get this mix and master? And I was like, no. Like I, I went to the studio and I recorded it and I put it out and that's it, papi, that's it. And he was like, no, nah, um, send me all the files. And I sent him all the files and he sent it back to me. And it, it just sounded like what music should sound like when you put it out. And, and Vespertine taught me about mastering and mixing and how important that was. So he put out the project and I thought the, the project was like spectacular. It was so good, but there was just something missing. And I kind of helped him like remaster the project. So everything, so the story could like weave in easily. And um, I was telling him about mixing and mastering at the time. He didn't even know. So after after that, he was so infatuated of how, you know, I had weaved everything together for him to make the story a whole. And um, that's when he asked me to be part of the King for a Day project. Being told like, oh, like, you know, it's, you know, it's cool with you being gay or whatever, but don't tell nobody you gay because they're not going to support you. And I decided to keep that in the forefront of my my mind. So a lot of the songs I was writing, I was scrapping them because I'm like, I can't, I can't talk like this. Like I can't use pronouns and all that. Like nobody's going to fuck with me. So I just decided that with King for a Day, I was going to be very, very simple, keep everything very, very general. So everybody can come to the party. And um, 10 years later, I just feel like I'm, I'm finally like walking in my truth, like in a way that not only feels good to me, but I'm hoping that it inspires other people. And I was sitting, you know, just listen to a few tracks that he was working on. And um, at the time, 
he was creating that project. He um, wanted to uh, con to convey this message, but didn't want to really share much of his sexual preference. And at that time, you know, he would call me up. He was like, Fess, I don't know. Like, I'm a gay, uh, I don't want people to know I'm a gay artist. They're going to like ruin me. And, you know, during that time, coming out in the music industry was like somewhat okay, um, but still a little taboo. And I was just encouraging him the whole time, like, nigga, just go for that shit. Just do that shit. But he didn't do it anyway until later on. <laughs> but it's all good. Going back and listening to King for a Day, um, you see, you can, you could tell the energy that he was trying to deliver and the fire that he was delivering as a total sag. Um, I see where he was going with it and the way that he did it was very superb. And that's what I love about Anthony because he has a message and he's real good at putting that message together with his music and delivering it the way that he does. So I was like, Burr. so, um, can you miss a Master King for a day from me? <sighs> Send me the files, Ism. So I sent Vespertine the files. When when everything was done, it was like, shit, like, shit, my records sound good. Like, yeah, all right. Like, like, I, like I, I sound like something, you know, like these little songs of loneliness and desperation and all of that sound like something. Um, so with 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 without Vespertine, it wouldn't have sounded how it sounded. But without Dave and Trav, I I wouldn't have had direction, and I would have just been in the studio just trying to figure shit out. And I really really learned prep like preparation and like preparing before you go to the studio was very very important. So you aren't wasting time. Like don't go to the studio with nothing done. Like go with an idea. Go with a song. Go with something. So, so you aren't wasting time. So, yeah, like I didn't, I didn't have a fucking laundry list of people that were in and out the studio. No, I, I kept it very, very tight because I don't want too many people in my head, in my ideas, telling me this don't work and that don't work when it does, or you know, not trusting myself. It, it was, it was all about business. Um, we had our fun, but at the same time, we, um, we really. Um, we really dedicated ourselves to um, to releasing a solid project. So, um, you know, just that in itself was enough for me um, when it when it came out. Um, you know, I remember we did we did everything. You know, we did the the graphics, we did the photography, we shot the videos uh, with, with what we could, when we could, how we could. <laughs> the sweet blood of Jesus placement came out of nowhere, which was just more icing on the cake i was once it came out i was ready to just um just celebrate it as that and then um and then we come with um a placement you know in a, in a spike lee joint um on uh i don't feel god which just my head exploded when um when when, when, when we got the news on that so it was just uh incredible sometimes, sometimes, sometimes i don't feel god, god and it scares me it scares me too I had just um, applied for the Red Bull Music Academy. Um, I, I thought I killed my application. Apparently I did not because I was not selected. Anyway, just, just I, I had just gotten laid off from my job. I was really devastated because I don't have family in Georgia. And it's like, if I lose my job, if I lose my apartment, like what am I gonna do? I was on Facebook scrolling and I see this ad, Spike Lee seeks unsigned artists for the, for the sweet blood of Jesus. And I'm like, hmm, no context as to what the fuck this movie is actually about. It's Spike Lee and I think I want to do this. So I decided to submit I Don't Feel God 
not really knowing it and or understanding anything about this this film, but the sweet blood of Jesus and I don't feel God just just, just kind of made sense to me in that moment. So I submitted it. And maybe, you know, sometime after that. I had gotten booked for my first feature show in New York and I'm preparing to come back home. I get an email. Hey, you're in the semifinals. I'm like, okay, cool. Then he just starts asking me questions like, where am I from? And whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like, yo, he's really like, he's really like trying to like, I'm like, yo, are like you asking me questions? Like you gonna put my my song in the film? Like, is you gonna do it or not? Like, let me know. Cause at this point I'm like, he's he's probably just fucking being nice. And then right before I came back up here, I got the email, you're in the film, mum's the word. Right after I got that email, I had to hop on a, on a, on a, on a flight to come up here for a show and I can't tell anybody anything. I'm at the show, I'm beside myself happy. Oh, SMO, you've got so much energy. Yeah, because I'm in a Spike Lee film, bitch, but I can't tell you. So time goes on, you know, stuff's going on with the film and the da 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 and the soundtrack and the boom, boom, but I'm in it, so cool. Um, got to, he invited me to come to the cast and crew private screening. So I came and I got to see the film and when my song came on in the film, it was just like, I just, it hit me that Spike Lee and Wesley Snipes and Riley Simpson are like sitting right behind me. So I can't freak the fuck out. So I'm just sitting there like like this frozen and I'm crying my eyes out. Um, because I never, I never thought that would ever happen to me. Like nobody believed that I would even get that far. So to even have that happen was was such a big deal. And then after the film, we had a little cast of crew private party or whatever, um, sponsored by Grey Goose. Um, that we drank for free all night. So you already know what 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 kind of mood I was in when I left. Um, and I saw him and I said, I have to say thank you. Like I have to thank him. So I, I drank my drink and and I got my courage up. I made a beeline for Spike Lee. I gotta fucking talk to him. He was he was talking to people. I'm like, I wait. So I I find my moment. I'm going there. I said, hey, I just wanted to say thank you. You know, you put my song in the film. He, he asked me who who I was. I, I said it's uh, Ism. He said, what song was it? I said, I don't feel God. And and he turns around to a to a to a Zara Abrahams who plays Ganja. And he said, this is the guy I was telling y'all about. And it was like, bitch, <laughs> you was talking about me? You was talking about me? Um, we ended up going to the bar and taking a shot. And I just thanked him again. Like I, I got to have a private, like a personal moment with him to let, to let him know how much that meant to me. And it just really gave me all the juice I needed to really keep going. Um, cause I had gotten a horrible, scary thing with you about Kane for a day. So I was like, yeah, like I don't, this whole album thing, I, I, I don't think it's for me, Bobby. I don't think it's for me. So, but I'm just grateful because he could have, it, it was so many submissions that he sat through and he picked mine. So don't, don't let yourselves talk yourselves out of doing things that could possibly change your life. Like how I was about to. Um, but yeah, man, changed my life. And and it and it gave me that that fucking battery in my fucking back to keep going. Yeah. I decided to put out Give Up the Ghost as like a promo type of single. I guess to to kind of get people ready for the direction change. I'm tired of smoking sick of liquor. The euphoria fades when in the morning I am sicker. And I allow my vices, priceless pain triggers. In my mind, I'm Goliath, but to you, I'm just a nigger. And I wonder how you figure I got commandments to deliver. Beware of every snake, they might seem pretty when they slither. Beware of every truth, there's no advisory sticker. Beware of every pussy, check it out before you the mixtape was very hip hop, like, you know, and I was making 
all of these alternative experimental hip hop beats. So I just, just kind of wanted people to get ready for that. And I put it out and it did absolutely nothing. Um, I got support from like a couple people. It was like, you know what? Yeah, so. And then Chasing You was the first single, official single. Um, the Vespertine did the cover art for that as well. Dave Jackson and Giovanni Pratt shot the video. Um, Morgan did the editing and everything. And we put it out. And it ended up like being like a, a, a like a crowd favorite at the live shows. Um, and then after that, I decided to put out I Don't Feel God because it was in the Spike Lee film. And then after that, it was like, okay, well, I'm ready to, to like move on now. Like, all right. And then I started to work on the on the next album. And I told myself that I was I was gonna take the band-aids off and and I was gonna pop my shit. And that ended up not really happening. But down the line it did with Black Boy Wonderment. Um and yeah, and and now I'm here. <laughs> I just really wanted to uh, encourage you, you who's watching this, who sat through this whole thing, to go after your shit, whatever your shit may be. If it's a book that you didn't finish, a you know a a course that you want to take, you want to start making beats or taking pictures or whatever, go after it. You you have no idea what rooms your gift can put you in. People speaking your speaking your name that you would have never thought would would ever speak your name. Go after these things that have been put into you and that have been downloaded into you. Go after them. I wouldn't. I don't think I would even be here if 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 I didn't do the first mixtape. If I didn't ask uh, Jen Brown to sneak me in the studio at at, at Rimapo so I could do demos. Go after your shit. Like you never know where it can take you and you don't want to live your entire life wondering what 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 if I had really gone for it? Really go for it. Did you saw what happened to me, Papi? I hear. I cut. <laughs> King for a day showed me that I can I can take something and bring it to life. And even though it may not have been the most uh, eloquent or the, the most uh, perfect, King for a Day showed me that I can, I can really do this. And that at the end of the day, there's, there's something in me that's worth, you know, pushing. And King, man, I, I love King, man. I love King. King, King got me some, some opportunities that you wouldn't believe. That, that sometimes I don't believe and got me love from people that would have never talked to me otherwise. So, King is like my best friend, man. It's my best friend.
just 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 loving all the success uh that you have ism and uh you're going to continue to have success because um because your drive is impeccable and um and you just love what you do and uh that's what it starts with so happy 10 year anniversary king for a day um i am uh truly blessed and honored to have um been executive producer and uh creative director on the project so um you know today is, is probably one of my um one of my greatest accomplishments uh for for something just being created organically so um so again um just celebrating this 10 years uh that we got for king for a day and um we just gonna keep on rocking to the future hey jack out and i'm i just want to say i'm proud of him i'm very proud of him